You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network. Oh, there we are. We made it. Happy Saturday night, everybody. It is 10.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the UFC event, UFC Vegas 29, is over. It's all done. Korean Zombie gets back in the win column. A very fun, technical battle between the Korean Zombie and Danny Gay. TKZ gets back in the win column and... Puts a bow on a pretty interesting and pretty fun night of fights for the Ultimate Fighting Championship coming out of UFC 263. Thank you for joining us for the UFC Vegas 29 live post-fight show. I am Mike Heck, and I believe it's just a a tag team, a two-man crew here, being joined by the man who wears many hats on the ones and twos, Mr. E. Casey Lydon. How are you, sir? How did you enjoy the festivities tonight? I can't hear you. Gosh darn it, I was muted. I just had this whole great thing I just said. I can't repeat it. <laughs> Korean zombie. Uh, I figured. Korean zombie, baby. Uh, I was very confident going into this fight that this was a zombie's fight to win. And um, yeah, Korean zombie showed up. And um, good performance from Ige. But um, yeah, Korean zombie's the man. Good for him. I thought it was uh, an interesting fight. The scorecards were all over the place. They were everywhere. My scorecard was vastly different than yours. I gave Ige the first round very slightly, gave him the fourth round very slightly. I thought Zombie easily won two and three, and obviously he won the fifth round because of position, and Ige had some scrappiness to him, but in the end, it was TKZ put a stamp on it. So how did you score the fight? Did did I see that correctly? Did you score (laughs) 50-44? Yeah, I gave every round to Zombie. Uh, the close rounds, rounds one and three, or rounds one and four. Were those the close rounds? Those are the debatable rounds. Is that what those are the saying? debatable rounds. Yeah. Well, I gave. I I I can see those going Zombies. I mean, going Ige's way, whatever. But uh, I gave I gave all five rounds the Korean Zombie plus um, a ten eight round for the round where he was stuck in that body lock for like thirty minutes. So yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I scored a forty-eight, forty-seven yeah. for Zombie. Yeah, when, and when I say when I say, uh, and that's why this is why we talk about this all the time. Why I hate the ten-point mess system. It's like ten nine. How, how ten nines are just not created equal round to round. So why I scored it a fifty, forty-four. The fight was more competitive than the score sounds. You know, I, I would mean. agree. Yeah, I, I would completely agree. And uh, props to Danny Gay because. There are very few guys at 145 pounds who will get on the microphone after a victory and call out the Korean zombie. He did that, went the full distance with him, and uh, there we go. And I believe Jose is potentially joining us as well. Jose, we got Jose here. Joining us, Jose. I've been here. (laughs) I I don't know. know. I don't know why everyone was like, like, oh, you guys, we're the two-man show. I've been here since the beginning. I don't know why people (laughs) ignore me. (laughs) I was like, yeah, as was soon as you in the said, green room the whole time, I wasn't. Yeah, I was here before everybody. I just didn't get called. No, me, in. I was. Oh, okay. It was very whatever. So, how are you, Jose? Okay. How did you score well, the fight? Uh, four to four to one zombie. Uh, but again, don't take. I'm going to preface this because I think more people, more journals should journalists should do this. Don't take my take my word for grain of salt because I'm a very big Korean zombie fan, and I it's not. I'd obviously watched it with rosy, rosy uh, glasses. So uh, don't take take what I say. All my zombie praise with a grain of salt. Uh, I, obviously, I think Dan Ige is a very awesome, exciting action fighter. I'm always going to tune in and watch his fights. But I am a self proclaimed. I am the self proclaimed biggest Korean zombie fan out there. So again, don't take take my praise with a grain of salt because I was going to praise zombie no matter what. Does but we, but we can agree. The right fighter won. 
I mean, I know we can oh, argue yeah, rounds, but the right fighter won. Yeah. So. Okay. That's yeah. all. That's all that matter matters. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a spin. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's. Danny Gay, great effort. Eric Nixick, tremendous coaching. That's why I like hearing the, the the corner cams in between rounds. I don't like when they go to commercials. Eric Nixick did a did a fantastic job. Coach Danny Gay up perfectly. It just Zombie just seemed to step ahead of him. And now Green Zombie moves to three and zero when he does his camps in the United States at Fight Ready in Arizona. So there you go. Maybe that's a sign of things to come. Just keep doing your camps there, and maybe you'll be a champion of the world. And that kind of leads me to my next question, Jose Youngs. Where do, where does he go from here? Because featherweight is is in a weird spot right now because we're still waiting for this title fight. We just lost Yair Rodriguez versus Max Holloway. We don't know what's going to happen there. The plan is we need to reschedule that at some point. That what do we do? Like where does Zombie go? Do, do do we wait and see like when Calvin Cater can fight? Because that's maybe the only fight that makes sense outside of those other guys. Like what do we do here? I just wait and see all around, no matter no matter who it is. Either you wait for this, you wait for Cater, you wait to see what happens with Yair and Holloway, or you just give him, uh, you have him fight way down in a really exciting fight in Giga Chikadze, which I don't think anyone would say no to, but obviously he's everyone ranking wants to wise, fight up. Uh, yeah, uh, ranking wise, it's yeah. not going to make sense. But we all agree Giga Chikadze is better than his ranking shows he just he's just now breaking the top 10 or you wait for josh emmett i know arnold allen is out there so uh you got to take away and see approach no matter who who no matter who you match him up with you're gonna have to wait for a bit which is uh for zombie fans i feel like wait has been the phrase that has been tacked tied to their favorite fighter for uh many moons uh in the in this crazy fight game um, I, I will let my best friend AK Lee know that all of you are hoping he could be here. He is on boxing duty right now. He's doing the live blogs for the website for the card that will feature Anderson Silver Silva versus Julio Cesar Chavez. And there's a lot of, that will be going down. Tonight. Yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot of boxing going on. And Monster Inouye's fighting tonight. Ooh. Yes. And that kind of leads us to another thing we're going to be doing later on. And this will, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. It has, we have no control over, <laughs> but once that fight happens, once Anderson Silva and Julio Cesar Chavez make the walk, we're going to live, we're going to do a little watch along. So we, uh, we hope you guys will order the pay-per-view and watch along with us. And we will just discuss it as it happens until it's over. So we'll have fun with that. So if it doesn't happen for like an hour and 45 minutes from now, we'll talk about UFC Vegas 29. We'll take a little break. You guys get some food. Do what you need to do. And then right when the intros are about to start, we'll come back and we'll watch the fight together. I think that's a... We'll try something here, see how it goes. And if you guys dig it, maybe we'll continue to do it in the future. But we have bonuses, gentlemen. We have bonuses. All right. All right. That's my favorite part of the night. All right. All right Jose probably... Jose definitely knows who they are by now. Um, yeah, man. I've been making this graphic for a minute now. Cause <laughs> I had it all... I thought... Because like, as the fights go on uh, and like these crazy fights and crazy performances happen, I try to get ahead of it. So like, I think we can all agree Matt Brown probably gets one because that was a bad stoppage. So Casey, I just can't throw that out there because that's an obvious one. So then... But then I had two more in the bank and neither of them got it so i got the fight of the night right and the matt brown okay, so, right so there's a fight is there a fight of the night there's a fight of the night yes of yes. course there's, a, there's one fight of the night and two performance bonuses and i only got one of the performance bonuses and i got two, i guessed two of them and they were both wrong all right so fight of the night vera grant mm -hmm. uh, oh, that, was, sure. that was an easy one um performance okay obviously matt brown now I'm gonna pick someone who I know didn't get it, but I think she deserved it, and that's um, uh, Janjaroba with that dislocated arm bar that she should have had to finish within the first couple minutes. But Murata is a tough m effer and somehow still fought a round and a half with one arm. But I doubt Janjaroba got it. So, but that's who I would. She did not get it. I, I feel like she deserved it. She did it. not. Yeah, she did not get it. And knowing you, Casey, if she won a unanimous decision tonight, you still would have given it to her because that's how you view her. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, <laughs> what, that was great performance. What, what, what was she? That she was, she, was she submitted. She broke Murata's arm in the first two minutes of that fight. It was unreal. It's impressive. 
Marauder, yeah, she Marauder. Didn't get a bonus though. Yeah, because uh, because UFCs they they hate submissions, and when you're that low in the card, you almost <laughs> never get one. Uh, I'm assuming, right, well, you, I'm who, assuming who um, the guy that um, beat up um, Wellington. Nope. Oh, you no. didn't get it. Wow. Um, I don't know then. Oh, Choi. I guess Choi got it, May. Choi yep. is yeah. the correct answer. Um, so no, no Casey O'Neill, no Ricky Glenn. After three years away and like yeah. a thirty-second oh, knockout, yeah, he gets Ricky Glenn. Yeah, and a name I had, uh, I had Ricky Glenn and Bruno Silva. Like I had the graphic ready to go, and then our colleague Sean Al Shadi ruined my graphic. <laughs> Dude, but I always say that's why car placement, um, placement in the card matters. It freaking matters if you want that fifty grand. When you're that early on the card, if Ricky Glenn was the co-main event. He gets a he gets a performance bonus, but that's not how it works in the UFC. So here we are. Yeah, I thought Bruno was the other guy. I thought it'd be Matt Brown and Bruno. We'll see. I mean, it's just it's just a weird thing. If Vera Grant doesn't happen, I think the UFC was kind of like banking on four performance bonuses. They they probably thought Vera and Grant was going to be a like a good fight. They probably didn't expect it to be what we saw tonight because that fight was insane. Absolutely is this, ridiculous. Is this the first victory for Zombie where he has not won won a performance bonus? I think you're. I think that might be an accurate statement. I'm, I think it's his first victory. I'm pretty sure you're performance right. Performance bonus, yeah. So congratulations. Say it again. No, it's his first, Say it again. Say it again. For Korean Zombie, it's, 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 this is his first UFC victory without getting any sort of extra performance bonus, either fight of the night or yeah. correct. Cool. Correct. Credit, that's, that's insane credit to, Dan, to think credit about. Credit to Dan Ige. Dan Ige, 50K, giveth and he taketh away. That's true. That's very true. And that was his first decision win since 2008, right? 13 years? Shut up. <laughs> Between wow. decision wins? Well, he was he was one second from being a decision win against Yair. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Hey, but you don't, fight, you, don't, you don't fight for four minutes, 59 seconds. I mean, you know. 24 minutes, 59 seconds. That's right. Uh, just ask, I mean, or 23 minutes. Just ask Leon Edwards about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yep. May of 2008 was his last decision win up until tonight. That is insane. Where? Where? That is a wild statistic. Again, oh, again, in deep? Is that the one you're talking about? In, uh, I think in deep, yeah. Against UFC veteran um, Omagawa, too. <laughs> Uh no! Oh, is, it was, oh, is that a different one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For Korea, Korea FC. Well, we're we looking at a different one. It doesn't say that the August 2008 one in deep. It just says win. At least I'm looking at topology right now. Yeah, I see it as um, Michihiro Omagawa, but yeah, it just says win. That's all I see too. Yeah. So that was deep, deep gladiator against Omagawa. That was his last decision. Yeah. Win and well, and so before was, that, he had he fought three days, three times in one night, and the last fight was a decision win. <laughs> He's such an animal, man. Such a such a fun guy. I, I could see why the admiration is there in in spades from you, Jose Youngs, for the mm -hmm. Korean Zombie. Great win for him, Danny Gay. No shame in the in the defeat, and he will move on. Featherweight is loaded. There will be uh, no shortage of opponents for him. Co-main event. Sergey Spivak defeats Alexi Olenek. Throughout the broadcast, from like right after the fight ended until like he left the cage, John Anik was like, "Come Tuesday, Sergey Spivak's gonna have a uh, gonna have a rank ranking next to his name." I don't know if I buy that. Like, I know that normally if you fight a rank guy, like you just take their spot, but I just don't know if like the voting committee is going to be like, wow, that's Spivak performance. Let's shoot him into the top 15. Cause while it's a good win and Alexi Olenek is a nice name and he's a veteran, he's got 7,000 fights. I don't, I don't know about you, Casey. I don't, it's nice to get the win. You want to get the second half of your paycheck. And that's, that, that's what we're striving for. But in terms of like moving up the ladder, I don't know, man, I don't think his stock rose that much tonight after that performance. Am I, am I crazy? Uh, it's slightly crazy. I mean, he, he beat him pretty decisively. Um, uh, what, what was it? What was he ranked in the UFC rankings for? It? What was um, Olenek? Yeah, what was Olenek ranked? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, I mean, maybe I don't know. Move, 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 move him to sixteen. Spivak, 
and whoever's number sixteen is <laughs> not fifteen. I don't. I don't. I, I, I never agreed with the whole if you beat if if you know you were number five. You know, I, I never agreed you go right in front of the guy who just you just beat. I don't. I don't like those type of rankings. But um, I, 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 he's up there. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I thought Olenek was overrated. I mean. I, Overrated. I don't want to say overrated. I, I don't think. I don't think he was fifteenth ranked. I think it was kind of based on. Um, I don't. Know, it's UFC rankings. I don't. Know. I, I didn't. I didn't see Olenek as the one of the top fifteen heavyweights in the UFC. That's all. So. Right. I. I'm not. I'm not putting Sergey Spivak above guys like Alexander Romanov by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not going to happen. So the rankings. Like, I just don't put him that high. Were, so, but. But the rankings were off then. You just didn't agree. If you, did you agree with Atlantic Shimon 15 in the first place? Oh, no. But okay. he was. And I just don't think that – I don't think that performance is like, wow, this guy's a top 15 guy, like automatically. I just – it was it was fine. But he was put in that spot to like go out there and annihilate that man, and he didn't do it. I don't know. So I mean, it's a nice win. Atlantic's but, never going to get I mean, 60 wins. How long, how long have we – three tries in a row. He's never going to get 60. <laughs> I know that that one that one Jose has to deal with as well because he's been sitting on a graphic for a while and he hasn't been able to put it out there. So I, I saw the graphic on our Slack channel. I was like, ah, oh, he worked so hard on it. <laughs> I worked so hard on it like a year ago. I've just been chilling. <laughs> well, it, it counts. Jeez. Well, so Sergey Svivak kind of puts a pin in that for now, Jose. What did you think of his performance tonight? It was a fight. It was a fight. <laughs> Jed Mashu probably loved it. <laughs> it was a fight. It was a Jed fight. Oh, no. The Jed fight was the first fight of the night. Uh, what was that? <laughs> no, the third round was a Jed round with both men just huffing and puffing, just absolutely exhausted. There's no technique, no cardio, just the 18th and 19th best heavyweights in the world just rolling around on one another. <laughs> Is that what we talk about the uh, the barn burner between Josh Parisian and uh, and Roki? Yeah, that fight ruled. Poor Roki, man. Did, I thought he won that fight. What I thought Roki won. What did MMA decisions say? I mean, I, th- I mean, it wasn't like we're not writing. I- I'm sure AK is not going to write a robbery review about that fight, but <laughs> I was just like, man, Roki like did everything right. He he lost a bunch of weight, like looking a little bit svelte in there. Yeah. He's looking quicker. You know what? You're right. What does it um, say? Uh, looks like about, uh, I would say eight out of eight out of ten journalists picked um, Roque Martinez. Had, they had them winning that fight. Or, yeah, I thought he kind of got the hose job on that one. But you keep him around and you let him fight Chris Barnett and you give us that fight. Like that is just that that is just a fight we have to see. I know you're saying Chris Barnett, but there's this gentleman from last week or two weeks ago and. He was in desperate need for a win at heavyweight. And I said, have him face the bottom tier heavyweights. And that's Walt Harris, maybe versus either Pri- uh, uh, per- per- Josh, per- how do you say his name? Per- per- Parisian. Parisian. Josh Parisian or Martinez. Um, for you guys, someone, like, what we think about Walt Harris. I'm talking about Walt Harris, you know, for a uh, someone that for him to fight. And yeah, that's all. I was, when, I, when, I saw, when I saw Martinez lost, I was like, oh, Walt Harris versus um, Martinez. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I Parisian's fine. Yeah, either if you want to throw one, Parisian one, in there, one. Yeah, they're sure. kind of the same. They're kind of the same. Yeah, Roki, Chris Barnett, loser leaves town, and then <sighs> Parisian versus Walt. That's that's fine. If Walt, I mean, you you kind of want to get Walt in there with like a striker at this point. If you're just kind of giving him the best opportunity to win, Parisian's a good wrestler and good on the ground. So, but still, if you're Walt Harris at this point in your career, you should be able to to beat a guy like Josh Parisian. And if you can't, then we kind of have some answers. But uh, Chaos Williams, Matt Selmsberger was a lot of fun. Yeah. I enjoyed that that one. I uh, had no issue with the scoring on that one. Thought Chaos Williams won that one. Selmsberger had a good showing for himself, but and in I, the end. I thought, it was Chaos a, one. I thought it was a great victory for Chaos, too, because he fought through some adversity and he fought a solid three rounds, too. Because, you know, we can't, when you get these two, we had those two first round, like two knockouts and like two seconds each, you know, that doesn't tell you very much about him. Even as a fighter, it kind of, they can kind of really, you know, inhibit your growth as a fighter. And I think the prayer fight, you know, he was, he fought well, but just not strategically there. But, Chaos. I think he learned from that 
um, Pereira lost and um, looked great tonight. I thought. I don't know if he's a world beater. You know, top ten. I don't think I didn't see that tonight. But um, good victory for chaos. Yeah, very composed out there. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was good. Obviously, the the move to Jackson Wink has uh, has done wonders. Uh, Greg Jackson in this corner and seems to be doing well. Uh, Siung Wu Choi got a bonus. Great performance against Julian Arosa. Rose is a tough, durable guy, and to go out there and just smash him like that in the first round, that is not easy to do. So kudos to him. Bruno Silva, what a debut for him. Ground and pound, knocks out Wellington Terman unconscious. That was Ooh. sick, nasty knockout. Uh, but we have to salute Mr. Salt and Pepper himself, Matt Brown, the guy just ageless in there. And I kind of like, I don't know, I, I felt like, I picked Lima by decision. Me too. I was looking okay, but when they were introing Matt Brown and I saw like the little salt and pepper going on, <laughs> the look in his eyes, I'm like, oh boy, this dude's this dude's here to scrap tonight. So what did you think, Jose? How, how did you react to Matt Brown landing that ferocious face plant knockout punch? Mm. Well, he definitely weathered the storm, which because uh, if you watch the preview show, I, like one of the questions was like, who's going to get hit in the junk first? I said probably Matt Brown because he gets... Attacks to the body on the reg, and Diego Lima throws a lot of kicks, especially with the leg kicks. But Matt Brown not only ate a bunch of kicks to his legs, he threw a bunch of kicks. So even even outside of the knockout, I was just very impressed with Matt Brown's approach. Uh, I do have to – because they kept talking about how much they had trained together and stuff, so I do have to imagine both men knew each other fairly well. Uh, so, But, yeah, awesome fight. It was what, Was it the right or the left that he knocked him out with? Can't even remember. I feel like uh, I blinked. I, like I was, was, I, was I was, I was like making a graphic for like Matt Brown's like UFC welterweight records, and I was like looking up through like, like right the straight, corner of my right eye, straight, right straight. Yeah, right. and I felt like I looked down and up, and it was over. Like it was over in a split second. Uh, so awesome fight for Matt Brown. I hope he gets another uh, veteran high level fighter. I saw a lot of people saying he should fight Nick Diaz. I don't hate that fight. It's not going to happen. Uh, but I hope he gets another. Like like one of like the Carlos Condit fight. I was which is why I, I wish Dan Hardy was still in the UFC because I want to see that fight too. That would have been the fight to make. Brown versus Hardy. The comeback mm -hmm. fight. Could have made a big deal out of it. Uh but that will not happen. What I mean, do you, what do we do with Matt Brown now, Casey? Do we get him in there with another like up and coming 170 or do we just keep him on this veteran tour? Maybe maybe do the rematch with Robbie Lawler or something? Like, what are we thinking? Did the did the Matt Brown Carlos Condit fight ever happen? Yeah, it did. Yeah, Condit beat him on Fight Island. I oh, said so they actually did. Fight. Okay, I remember that fight was like booked and canceled, booked and canceled. All right, never mind. Because everyone, it didn't, it didn't, there it wasn't the fight. Every thousand billion fight, so I don't remember everything. It wasn't <laughs> the fight. We, MMA fighting was on the scene for that one. We're on the scene for everything. <laughs> That's what we do. We're MMA freaking fight. Well, we were physically on. The, one of us was all the way in Abu Dhabi for that fight. I know. I can't wait to find out who that person is and thank them. I know. Yeah. Jeez, what a great journalist. <laughs> you, they you, must have been. You, you would be the first. Is it AK? Is it AK? He's probably AK. I don't yeah. think he can leave his country. Yeah. Uh, Matt Definitely Brown. wasn't uh, me. I don't know. Give, give Matt Brown. He's in, he's in. I didn't like the fight with Diego Lima in the first place. I just, I think with Matt Brown's last, you know, few, three or four fights, I just didn't like this fight. But it turned out to be, turned out to be a good knockout. But um, yeah. Matt Brown versus the yeah Legend Store. I don't know <laughs> who who are you saying? Uh, since he already, he already did the Condit thing, I guess. Oh Lawler, uh, okay. Yeah. Do a Lawler rematch. Yeah. I just don't know who. Yeah, I don't know who else is. Um, is Perry still a UFC fighter? Mike Perry? Did they fight? I don't know. I can't remember. I mean, that's that's not a bad idea I mean, just, a lot of people it's, it's, a lot of people action, are calling. action fight it's action fight you know not a lot of people are calling for mike perry in our instagram comments yeah I mean, diaz just, and diaz and mike perry were the two that a lot of people asked for i wish i mean i, I wish they would do the nick fight they won't because i think nick will probably be in the mazda all sweepstakes one would guess because if he's gonna fight it's gonna be a big deal and it's gonna be at a big spot and matt brown one probably isn't that as fun as that would be for for us fans, just not the not the fight Nick would probably want to come back to, considering he wouldn't make as much money. So we could ponder on that one. Maybe the winner of Condit and Max Griffin 
I mean, not Honda. The lose, like if Max Griffin wins, maybe we could do that. Yeah, that's, mm. that would make sense. I feel like I feel like there's a perfect name out there. We just can't see it. Yet. Alex Morono. He just knocked out Cowboy. Cowboy knocked out Matt Brown. Matt Brown, Michelle Pereira. Hey. Oh boy. <laughs> just those cla- this clash of styles. Like, what about know? what about James Krause? That's a that's a veteran. Both very good coaches. Like Matt Brown is a phenomenal coach. James Krause is obviously everyone calls him the cheat code right now. That would I would just like I'd just be fascinated by that to see like the game plans that they would put together for each other. This this, mm-hmm. is, this is interesting one someone just mentioned. Um, I didn't think of this one, but I love the the style clash. They already fought. Fight him again. Matt, <laughs> Damian Maya is probably not going to have another UFC fight. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. I mean, I like that fight. What about uh, Cowboy Oliveira? Like, he's in desperate need of a win. He's an action fighter. I'd watch that one. Yeah. You bring over I mean, Doug, you bring over Dougie Lyon from Bellator and have him have him fight Matt Brown. Just have him rematch. <laughs> have that rematch. See if Matt. Yeah. Dude, the Lima it's brothers. Lima, Lima brothers had a bad week. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> bad yeah. week for the Lima. Has brothers. he fought Court McGee? Has he fought Court McGee? Court McGee just won, right? Those are two him? veterans. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's not a bad idea. What they're gonna end up doing is they're gonna throw him in there with like Shafka Rachmanov or something, yeah. and it's just gonna be we're just gonna be like, oh no. It's a lot of rematches. I I, I keep thinking of Matt Brown as like it's like he's like he's fought all these guys already. Like, you know, it's just it's like it's like, oh Carlos Khan's like, no, they're just falling. Like, all right, Maya, oh, they already fought. <laughs> it's like, all right, I don't know. I like that rematches. Fit. Brown one just re- just sign Shinya Aoki finally and have him fight Matt Brown. There you go. Oh, I like there that idea. Go. Problem solved. I saw the one. Wonder Boy rematch idea. Uh, I think mean, Wonder Boy's Boy obviously way a too busy right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, I was just, I was just more just amazed at um, Matt Brown's. Uh, how many, how many top level guys he's fought? He has the most fights in the history of the welterweight division in the UFC. Really? Are they yeah, all he has more. Right yeah. Much? Well, he's always been so K- AK and I were discussing this when I was making this graphic because he has the most TKOs, the most finishes, and the most fights and at welterweight history. And we were going back and forth whether it should be 27 or 28 because he missed weight for Robbie Lawler. So technically, that would be a catch weight. Uh, but we just decided it was scheduled welterweight fights. So he has 28 fights in the octagon, 20 scheduled welterweight fights under his belt, which is insane. You know, he's only missed weight once too, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He, get, he, get, he gets a mullet. He gets a mullet. It just mullet. happened at the, like, the worst time because that was his first main event. It was the number oh, one contender fight against Robbie Lawler. Too. You're right. Yeah. It, was his, it was against Robbie Lawler. And uh, so then they announced like, oh, if he if Lawler wins, it's a title shot. If Matt Brown wins, he might have to win one more and all that kind of stuff. It was just a bummer. Agreed. They're going to uh, give him like Liz Dez or something like that. Something crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be like, why? Why are we doing this? Right. And I'm not, I'm, uh, not, I'm not. I'm not actually. I'm not against that. I, I'm a big fan of like. I, I like the way Japanese promotions do it. You leave on a loss. You know, you retire yeah. honorably with a loss. And like, but. <laughs> but what if Matt wins? Then you just then, you woo. stunt the prospect. No, you don't. Then Matt Brown. Then then you go. Wow, that's how you retire, Matt Brown. You you knock out those kids and you go your hand held high and yeah. I don't Ponson think Matt's Ponson retiring Ibio. anytime soon. What about Pons and Ibio? That fight rules. Huh. They're both one and one on the one. They both lost. They both lost on the same day on Fight Island. They both came back and got an epic fight of the year contender and then a crazy knockout. I, I mean, that fight rules. I'm not even sure. Where's I don't Matt Brown? Where, where do we have Matt Brown ranked? I don't. I don't. I don't even know. I know he's not top thirty. Team. Top thirty, but he transcends rankings. He's just in fun fights. Yeah, yeah, like Condit, like you can give him whoever, and it's gonna See, be. Like, I, I'm actually, gonna I, if, if you're not going rankings, like I still like I love vet versus prospects, so I will, I love Matt Brown Baeza, you know things like that. I'm all. They already fought. How about Matt? They already fought. They are God. In Jacksonville, who, hasn't, who hasn't Matt Brown fought? God dang it! Matt Brown was supposed to fight Baeza in Columbus, and then they got rebooked to Jacksonville. He knocked Matt Brown out dead. Oh yeah, right. That's how. That's what it, I remember. That's what I was like. That was Baez. I was like, like oh, I was like, oh, Baez is really good. Yeah. <laughs> he also Matt Baez was like a self-proclaimed Matt Brown fan, so he said it was like really weird, like seeing him across the cage. 
Okay, I'm, I, I need to open Matt Brown's topology page because I'm just going off. I can't re- I mean, remember how many freaking fights he has. It's fought a lot. Well, we could yeah. we yeah we could we could make <laughs> the whole we could make life very easy. <laughs> we can make life very easy and just book it from the same card. Do Matt Brown versus Chaos Williams. I like that. Don't hey, no one's complaining about that fight. Yeah. No one's complaining about that one. So lots okay. of options. Matt Brown's at a good spot, and congratulations on a great win and uh and an extra fifty G's. Uh, we saw. Nick Nagumaranu get back. Uh, he's been gone for a while. Gets a split decision win over Alexa Kamer. I don't know if we're going to see Mr. Kamer in the octagon again. I just, I just don't know if it's going to happen after losing that fight and then losing to William Knight. Uh, Jen Daroba, we talked about great performance from her. She looked hungry and she looked motivated and she looked angry and and then she it trans transcended into the fight. Casey, I, I know you thought she should have got a bonus, but just. Why, her yeah. performance overall like I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because this is the one you had circled tonight are you surprised that it was so dominant no i mean i i, I expected i i i actually i i thought Murata was going to win a decision but i've been so high on janjaroba and i thought she beat carla sparza she was she was one one going up during into the third round and when Dern just brought those just brought those haymakers that we weren't expecting and really just overpowered Jan Jaroba in that third round that when she fought Dern. Um, no, I just, I think she's freaking awesome. Um, and Murata is crazy tough in her corners. Shouldn't have not let her fight an entire five minutes of a broken arm. That was uh, a bad idea. Um, that kind of had, I hope, hopefully that Murata's arm doesn't have long-term uh, damage. Um, but uh, man, it was a lot of broken arms recently in the UFC. Holy moly. Um, um, yeah, I just I just hated this fight because it was so low in the card and just it's just a for, kind of a, a forgotten fight, you know, unfortunately. And um, we're gonna see uh, Jandroba, you know, she's a, she's a title contender. She'll be I don't know if she'll fight for a title, but she's gonna be right up there very soon. And she is um, incredible. And I think it looks like she learned a lot from that Dern loss too. Um, she can I I couldn't I couldn't believe how heavy she was swinging those um, fists at the first the first the opening minutes. So she was like she looked like she was still pissed from losing that Dern fight. <laughs> So um, I'm very high on her. That left hand head kick combination she landed in the second round was nasty, so nasty. She her striking's getting better and better. Yeah. And have, uh, you, have you ever seen a fighter like, like Murata like fight that long with clearly a just like I, the whole time I was watching, like I was like, oh Verna, just take her down because right now Murata can kind of defend herself with one arm. But if she gets taken down, she would have nothing to defend herself with. So, um, I mean, luckily she didn't get taken down because that kind of seriously messed up arm. But uh, I was just, I was, I, I was, I was kind of annoyed of Janjaroba that she didn't, she didn't go for any sort of takedown that second round. Because that, that arm was, you could, you could have seen how messed it, how messed it, how messed up her arm was like from the parking lot. It was pretty obvious. And of course. Adelaide Bird had to rear her head into the conversation. Oh, the only God. judge to score the first round <laughs> scores the round for Murata. How can you score that 10-9 for her? Like, I understand that she got on top for, like, a few seconds. But how can you not score that round for John Darova? That's insane, Jose. It is insane. That is egregious. Yeah, it's Adelaide Bird. It's like she's a bad judge <laughs> or something. I wonder if she has a history of just crap decisions. And not knowing how to watch MMA or boxing for that matter in Las Vegas. But guess what? She's never going to leave because Las Vegas Commission is literally all politics. She's never going, she's not going anywhere. Who just walked by? Uh, Some ghost. Just anybody? I don't even know who that was. Some ghost. Wait, wait. wait. I thought he was wearing uh, like an old school 1990s Razor Ramon t shirt. Look at this. Oh, we got a dog fight going. It's Janaroba Murata too. Yeah, I know. Getting ladies, after it. Ladies, fights are over. Hey. Jeez. They got excited pro- talking. Hey, a little professionalism here. A little professional. Oh, this is this, I apologize. I I I mean they should know better. They're 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 senior ladies too. They're like twelve, they're like thirteen and fourteen years old. My goodness, my goodness! I I apologize. I mean, we go, we go from <laughs> we go from Matt Brown to to Janderoba Murata. I mean, that that fires everybody up. Uh, Parisian first UFC win, split decision. That Martinez should have got his first UFC win. Was that was that Ramundi? That was Ramundi. That was Ramundi. That was Ramundi. Right. Yeah, he 
if you don't know Mundy, he works for um a some Connecticut sports blog, and uh yeah. Espen what is that like? A, is that like a bi-monthly newsletter? Yeah, it's like a newsletter. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I they think, use chip, like mail. You know what? They, what is it like a like a Mailchimp server? Mailchimp. Yeah, you use Mailchimp.com. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This, is he wearing a is he wearing a, a Ramones shirt? Oh no, different shirt. <laughs> Showing off his his strength. Like What's guns. up? Hey, how we doing? Hey. He can't hear you. Doing fine. Everyone, he's doing good. He's doing great. <laughs> he's doing good. <laughs> uh this like th- this whole thing is just going off the rails it's like a perfect no. like perfect thing for this <laughs> for this particular night because things are really about to get off the rails in the boxing world uh of course ricky glenn and then casey o'neill can i, I gotta oh, give it a shout out to casey o'neill because yeah. she has she's made me look like like a genius like I try to I try to come on here and, and try to enlighten the folks on up and coming prospects and people making their debuts and I came came out here and I said Casey O'Neill's an animal she's gonna do big things even though she was five and zero at the time goes out there and finishes Lara Procopio like that is impressive man that was an impressive performance she started off a little slow Procopio had a good game plan early on but O'Neill man that pressure just doesn't stop like there's nothing you can do to stop it. It just keeps coming and coming. And if you're not ready for it, like if you're not trying to match that pace, you're in for a long night. I don't care how how long you've been in the sport, how much of a veteran you are. She's going to keep that pace on you and she's going to put you in some big problems. So what did you think of her performance, uh, Casey, for, from the other Casey? Great. Um, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't as high on her as you are, but uh, and I'm still not. But she's she's clearly ufc caliber she's a future uh top contender she's gonna be top 10 within you know two or three fights um she's awesome uh fights exciting good on the mic uh just uh just a great signing by the ufc and i'm just excited to see her progression and i think and i I think we're just done with saying um the ufc women's flyweight is a weak division or it's a, a throwaway division you know i think we're done with that just so many good lady flyweights are coming about now. And um just I'm very, just I'm excited about 125ers and um Casey Nil. She's uh like like other like like Andrew Lee, Miranda Maverick, you know, just a lot of just really good 125ers coming up the ranks and um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see her progression. Yep, she looked really good tonight. Yeah, just that was just, a big just, win. Yeah. Why why is it on the card? I felt like I, I well, you know, I'm like, you know, UFC, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's probably just for the time zone stuff for for the yeah. Scottish fans and the Australian fans to to be able to watch her compete, get her on early, and, and then go to bed if, if if they choose to do so. So, uh, what is going on in the boxing? Let me just take a gander. Someone's coming down. I think we're still like two fights away from the Anderson Silva fight. If who's fighting so now? It could be I'm trying to see who's walking. Let me see. Ramon Alvarez is currently making the walk. He's being wrapped to the ring <laughs> by uh it looks like the two guys who used to uh be PG thirteen in the pro wrestling <laughs> world back in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> so that should be fun. So I think we got this and then another one to go before the silver fight. Oh boy, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah. Are we gonna okay. stay on Let's go one? to the peeps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I'm like, let's go to the peeps. All right. Peeps, sweet peeps. Yeah, we'll go to the peeps. We're not going to. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this for a little while longer. And then we will take a breather. Take we'll a take breather. a break. We'll let you guys stretch out, take the dog for a walk, yes, make some pizza, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Grab a, go to the local packy, grab a 12 pack of your favorite brew. And then come on you back said, and we'll, I just turned uh, we'll it on. So this together. is Ramon. This is Ramon Alvarez walking in, right? Yeah. So there's yes. still the there's that, and then you got Chavez Senior, which everyone wants to watch, and then you got the main event. Oh, <laughs> Canelo's out there. All right, maybe some questions. So we got oh, some Canelo's time. Brother fought, I'm pretty sure. Didn't his brother fight? Yeah, he had a first round knockout. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. New shirt. Not new, but special occasion. You know. <laughs> 
One one of my few t-shirts, the sleeve I still have sleeves on. How about that? <laughs> that's that's a great point. That's a great <laughs> <Yeah>. point. <laughs> I actually because I'm on, I'm on air so much. I was like, oh man, I can't rip off sleeve off sleeves off all my shirts. I have to save a couple <laughs> just for just for this. <laughs> All right, we're both cru- we're both crushing throwback shirts today. Yeah. You have your cranberry <laughs> shirt on. What are you wearing? What I got my Wade. I got my Wade Boggs '83 rookie card what? tops T-shirt tops. on. Nice. Yeah, buddy. There you go. Uh, top fight for Davy Grant. Should he face the winner of Sean O'Malley versus Lewis Smolka next? Thirty. Davy Grant fight the winner of that fight. Is it? Or Vera fight the winner of that fight. I think they're saying Davy Grant. That's a 30. Uh, oh, um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, uh, winner, uh, I don't know about the winner. Um, yeah, especially if O'Malley wins, I don't see that happening. I guess I maybe guess the he, loser. If O'Malley wins, he's probably going to fight Cody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to see O'Malley there again. I really want to see that. But I, see, want, I had no idea Omar Chavez was fighting on this card, too. That is bizarre. Just a family <laughs> affair tonight. Yes. I don't know. It, it, for my money, put Davy Grant in there against anybody, and I'm watching it. That dude is such a gamer. I would say this. I was never high on Davy Grant, but I thought he was going to get whooped up tonight. I mean, he did lose the fight, but it was hella competitive, hella competitive. And um, Grant, you know, on the right day, would have beaten Vera. You know, just, no, if they fought 10 times, you no. Know, Grant definitely isn't, wouldn't have got smoked 10 out of 10 times. Um, Grant's definitely improved, and... Um, much more dangerous striker than he used to be, and um, yeah, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm excited. They'll, they got, they'll excited do the third fight Grant. eventually. They'll do the third fight eventually. I think. Certainly, certainly, I want to see it again. If they they did it right away, I wouldn't be mad at it because Bantamweight's yeah, so loaded up right if now. They, if they both win their next few, I wouldn't hate like a five rounder for the for the rubber match. I like that idea too. We always talk about you know these different like adjectives we give to these fighters like over the years, like motivated Connor and C-level Kane and all that stuff. And then we talk about like the adjectives for the round guys, like, you know, fifth round Robbie Lawler is a dangerous guy. And then there's second round Derek Lewis is a dangerous guy. Is Mar- is third round Marlon Vera like one of the best? Because this dude, it's like he never gets off to a good start. And it's always this, like he might be one of the best pound for pound second half fighters in the UFC right now. Like when that hits like 229 of the second round, he's a new man and he just unleashes fury. Like third and third his the third round for that guy, he's so good. It's so hard to beat him. Like where do you rank third round Marlon Vera? It's I know it's like a weird kind of open-ended <laughs> question, but where do you to rank third de- round Marlon Vera? To be determined because he's also lost two decisions in his last four fights. So if he keeps it up, then we can start. Because what was it? Yeah, the win, win tonight, and what was the one before that? He lost to Aldo. Before that, he beat Sean O'Malley in the first round. And before that, he quote unquote lost to Song Yadong. But wasn't he really, so, wasn't a really strong third round from Bear in the uh, the Dong fight? Yadong. Yeah, yeah, but that that too is weird because Song fades a lot in his fight. So that was like a combo of Song faded, and song I don't know. See, I see you shaking Bear your head, but I was going to hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish first. Let me finish first. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think I, for that fight, I don't think Vera just like hit the hit the gas. I think he stayed the same and Song faded. So it looked like he just picked it up. But I just think Song Yudong faded. Everyone fades. In but he, I still, I think we can all agree Marlon won that fight anyway. I actually had, had yeah. Yudong winning. But yeah. But, <laughs> it was close. Yeah, it was of course you did. Of course wait, you wait, did. Wait, of course it. I don't know. What? Oh, well, I'm an alpha role you guy? Did. You're always, you're yeah, always different. If I, if, yeah, everyone, everyone's I'm like, oh, it's 48, 47. Here comes Casey, 50, 43. I'm, I'm he's called a, it's called a, it's called a contrarian. I'm not a con- no, no. Je- wait, wait. <laughs> I was going to go with hipster, but I'll, a contrarian's fine. <laughs> no, he doesn't like being called hipster. Well, if, okay, hipster has no uh, meaning. Oh, sorry. Has, I'm has, sorry. Has no See, look at, there we go. It has no meaning. Hipster has no meaning, he's saying. Now. There's no meaning to it. Name something that has no meaning. I'm Call me an elitist. Yeah, I like, I like good shit. I'm like, I, I'm a, I'm a taste maker. Except for that white paint. The taste makers. Order in bulk. Oh. Casey likes, Casey, you don't eat vegetables. You eat french fries or potatoes for all of your meals and then have soylent. Like, no, we're not talking about I like good shit and I'm this and that. No, I don't want to see. I don't want to hear that. 
I don't know what's not, happening. You're the only it. person I've ever met that drinks Soylent straight up. Uh, hey, man, I'm, I'm I'm cutting down. I'm getting to my light. I'm getting. I gotta get to my. That's I'm walk, fine. I'm, walk, I'm walking not, around at welterweight now. I used that's... to be. I used to be a two hundred five. I'm walking around at welterweight. Got to work down the lightweight. You know. Mm-hmm. You want to get? Anaheim, Anaheim, where, where do you want to get to? What's the when, goal weight? When, I want to. We went to Anaheim. Casey opened his. We Casey opened the car door when we were in Anaheim for a UFC fight, and a bunch of his bags had like jostled around the back, and like seven bottles of Soylent rolled out into the parking lot. I've never seen so much Soylent in one place in my life, and it was all just like rolling around. And Casey was like, "My Soylent!" He was like picking it all up and like walk, walking back to his car. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I live on the okay, especially pre-pandemic. I lived on the yeah. road, and like I just like you got to be healthy. I'm, I gotta be healthy, guys. Well, yeah, it could be dangerous out there yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I don't drink. I don't drink anymore now. It's just like I'm a new. I'm a new. I'm a new Casey. I'm a taste maker. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet has no taste. It tastes like cereal. So, what do you want to get down to? I want to. I want to walk at 165 and then fight at 155. I'm. I'm. I'm you want to fight at 155? Yeah. What fight? Fight where? I don't know a local promotion. Yeah, street, street, street beefs. I don't. I don't talk about this publicly. Street beefs. Street beefs. All right, 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 all right, all right. Yeah, it's all right. I just it's, it's like my thing. I do. You know. Listen, we got like yeah, ninety minutes to fight, yeah. Anderson Silva. Yeah, fight, so. Charles Bellamy Bennett. Bennett. <laughs> that I'm in. That would scare me, but I'll be. I'm. I'm not. I, I, I'm not too. I'm down, but. You probably yeah. win. Yeah. You just got to get past the first hey, 35 you know seconds. You know, what, those you know what we say on these, you know what we say on these post fight shows. We love veteran versus prospect matchups. I can't think of a better one than Felony <laughs> Bennett versus Casey Lydon in an MMA fight. <laughs> that might be the best one ever. Oh my god! <laughs> don't don't do this! Don't do this! <laughs> All right, what else? Where, what else are the peeps say? <laughs> that was a good scrap. That really good fight. Davy Grant versus uh, Marlon Vera. Those oh, short oh, little oh. elbows, man. Whoo! He threw. David Grant, I got stunned, and he just froze for a moment. And, and Martin Barrett just like threw four elbows in a row, just yeah. like that. I was like, "Holy crap!" He just it was like spamming it was elbows so it was, fast. Yeah, it was amazing. But I thought Michael Bisping was really good in that fight on commentary, just because he's been in the gym with Marlon. I wanted to he's talk about actually. I was going to talk about Michael Bisping because normally, okay, I like Michael Bisping when he's in the booth, um, like the, the kind of the booth in between fights. I'm not big on him doing play by play or color during the fights, but one thing commentators always say, and I hate, but it made sense for Vera when, especially at third round, they went like, Martin Vera is a true fighter. And I was like, that's such a cheesy line. But then when I watch Vera, I go, yeah, I get it. You know, because, yeah, I get, you know, you just, there's some guys you just, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it, Vera. Because like, he was tired, exhausted, and yet he just had more in him in that, th- in that in third round Martin Vera. And um, when everyone else fades... Song Yudong faded. Um, Marlon Vera is still there, full speed, and um, that's amazing. So, um, yeah. Marlon Vera is getting that must-watch TV thing. You know, um, he, he's got to get a higher-level fight, but, like, is he is he been a boring fight? I mean, boring Marlon Vera? I can't. I, I, he's, even in his losses, like, I think he's always just an exciting fighter. All right. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a scrapper. Oh, here. Next one on Vera, actually. Uh, that's on Cheeto Vera's call tonight. A possible win over Dominic Cruz would benefit Vera's career and position in the rankings. I got to say, and I don't know how you guys felt about it. First of all, the timing was great. His wherewithal was great. And then on top of that, I think that fight makes all the sense in the world. Makes perfect sense to me. I, I mean, Sean O'Malley, I liked. Like, I liked the O'Malley Cruz idea when, you know, O'Malley was making those cool videos and calling out Cruz and doing all these different things. Like, I dug it. And if they made it, I would have been all in on it. But now that O'Malley's going to fight coming up on July 10th, Vera, Vera versus Dominic Cruz scratches me right where I itch. Not going to lie. What do you guys think of that? I don't hate it. Don't hate it. Was there any beef there? That was just, he just, was that more of just a mutual respect thing? It was like, or for Vera? I, didn't, I think that's more of a guy who sees Dominic Cruz as a big name that's ranked high and he thinks he can beat him. So I think okay. it's just. You know, yeah, take things. a spot kind of fight. Yeah. Cool. I didn't no, know. no beef there. No beef. Just Even so. Dom, because Dom, I don't listen to the, the commentary a lot, but I wanted to see if he would call out Dom. So I, I unmuted it for that. And Dom even said, uh, I respect the call out, but probably it's all. But based on Dom's answer, I don't think it's going to happen. 
because he said everyone wants to fight up, including me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just don't know who Dom fights at this point, unless Frank he fights. Yeager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I'd or if, if, if or if Marlon beats Marab, you know I'm all in on Cruz Marlon Marais. Oh, that's yeah. That was that was my fight for like five years. One of my yeah. longest features I wrote for fans. Or F it. Like, it's it's, Marab, it's like, always Marab, Cruz Marais. Marab is ten. Dom is nine. If Marab beats Marlon and he jumps up to seven, why like Cruz Marab too? That like, he would be fighting up, and then you could be like Dom Marab. No one wants to fight Marab. He's ranked higher than you. Take the fight. You said it, and then he can take it, and then Marab can just do his thing. He will pick up the phone and call Marlon Vera right away. Yeah. Be like, you, you know what? I changed. I changed my mind. I'll I'll fight you instead of Marab. That's just that's just not. That's such a high risk, low reward fight. Mm-hmm. That's a dangerous man. Or or uh, uh, if Aldo loses to Munoz, Cruz Aldo is fun too. Yeah, we have to see that fight at some point. Mm-hmm. Cruz Aldo, Cruz Edgar, oh, yeah. Cruz Aldo. That, that, that's I mean, as much as I want to see Vera versus Cruz. I mean, Cruz, I don't know how many fights he has left in him at a high level. We got there's too many other big names. I mean, unfortunately for Vera, I think Vera's there's he just doesn't have that history. You know, he's he's not on the the Legends tour yet. You know, like Cruz is. I think. Or um, he just fought I mean, Jose Aldo. So I mean, he's been in there with names. I mean, it's it's well, not totally out of the blue. And if he went to be in auto, then then we have a different story. But he lost auto, and I think it's I don't think he doesn't have that name value, unfortunately for Dominic. And I, yeah, and I don't just, and if, if Dominic only has like say three fights left, I don't I don't see I don't I don't want to see one of those fights versus Vera, even though I love. Vera. I think Dom I think Dom took that fight against Casey Cannon because he was on a. What two fight losing streak, and at that point, that like, even Jacare said, like, you can't at some point you just can't say no to fights. You just say yes. That's a smart. That's fight. a smart fight. Yeah, that's yeah. a perfect. That's also, a perfect like, fight. let's also not like I would any of them be opposed to Dom Cody too, or if no. or the loser is Dillashaw Sanhagen against Cruz. I wouldn't hate either of those. Like the rematch against TJ, I think Cruz TJ is one of the best fights I've ever seen in my live in my life. Yeah, and then everyone has been talking about Sanhagen Cruz and Sanhagen's first UFC fight. So like I think a lot of fights have to play out, but I feel like we've been saying that with Dominic Cruz forever mm-hmm. because he's been out he until he fought Casey Kenny, yeah. and he's gonna get matched up with something bizarre like I don't know <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, like Cody Stamen or something like that. You're yeah, like, okay, <laughs> like that's how it's gonna end up being. Exactly, he's gonna fight, he's gonna fight Davis and Figueredo, who bumps yeah. up to thirty five. Oh, it's yeah. gonna be something like completely yeah. crazy. I would still love that. Fight. Although that's not okay, that's not crazy. That, that actually is kind of fun. The champ coming. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. I didn't even think about that, but that's pretty cool. We, one, just, we, we just we just we just changed everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point being, I think Cruz has to fight some kind of more of a story. I think at this point in his career, that's all. Yeah, I do want to see the Dillashaw fight again. Yeah, I know. Or, or love to see it. Cody's uh, fun. Casey versus Mike Jackson. I I like Mike Jackson, but there's a bad fellow running. media member. There's a bad Matt Brown. Running. Matt Brown like Diego, Doug, Diego Lima too. <laughs> this is a prize fight, my man. That's right. <laughs> Casey has doesn't even have a fight. And he's being picky. Yeah, no. <laughs> Casey doesn't even just went out of what class. My, what's, Mike Jack, what's Mike Jackson even ranked? What's he ranked? <laughs> You know what we do? What I, what you know, you know what we do for Cody Cody, uh, Cody Garbrandt? We get him the lowest ranked bantamweight. Who is it? Casey Lydon? Get him in there. Get a win for Cody Garbrandt. <laughs> should we uh should should we try to get Cheeto Vera on what the heck this week? Please. Oh yeah. Please. Let's make it happen. Please. Uh, I... Let's make it happen. Maybe we can get Korean zombie. How about Ricky Glenn? Ricky Glenn. Ricky Glenn. Get AK, Roki AK, and Ricky. Give him AK. Okay. <laughs> AK just not respecting Ricky Glenn. That is just, oh, that guy is. He's crazy. Canadian. He's Canadian. Uh, they get free health care and they, all of a sudden they can pick your names. I talked to Cub Swanson about coming down there and working with Cub. And Cub was very excited, but he was in busy. He was, he was in fight camp and we were still in the pandemic era and neither of us were fully vaccinated yet. But now that we're all in the clear, I'm going to get. It's I'm happening. A, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Cub a 
couple little I'm gonna slide into his DMs and see what's up. I haven't talked to him in a little bit, but we'll see. <laughs> Enough about me. Um uh, uh, oh, you know what? Let's uh, switch gears a second. We haven't talked about this. Have you guys talked about the Rory decision? We talked about it on uh, the Q&A, and we all think it was on the level of Sanchez and Pearson. Yeah, it was very, very bad. I had <laughs> very an easy 30-27 I had an easy thirty twenty seven Rory. I was about to publish Rory McDonald wins. Like you're, I was like I was like there. about to post it. Like, and it. I was like and then they said split and I was like, Oh, that's weird. That's and weird. then they said glass tea, but I was like, That's stupid. That was one of the worst decisions I've ever seen in my life. But it was even greater for the PFL because they put like, you know, the the little judges decision. I mean not judges, like the analysts who they're predicting yeah. the the fans. It was like Roy, 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 Roy. And then judges Dude, was like Gleason. The, and they, they put that graphic up for like half a second before they took it down. <laughs> I was like, no. The commentators like Kenny Florian and um oh my god, what's his name? Former UFC fighter from Utah. Randy, Randy Couture. 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 Hey, was, who's the other guy? Sean, Sean was he not there? Sean O'Connell. Sean O'Connell. They were all like, they were all like, they were baffled by the decision. <laughs> right, like right they were so. just right taken so. aback, and I was like, "You're not wrong, gentlemen." It, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very bad, very bad. And uh, Gleison T. Bow coming out with his interview, being like, "I don't see how Rory won." I'm like, "Come on, bro." <laughs> Come oh, on, jeez. Of course, uh, I love our good I friend. I love me some goofy decisions, but come on. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very bad decision. Our friend Alex K. Lee wrote a robbery review on that already. That so you can go yeah. check that yeah. out. And uh, AK, I mean, you, you can see why. I mean, no one's going to say like Tebow won except for Tebow and maybe like his manager. But come on, that was a bad decision. Terrible. Even, even was, Is Ali his manager? Is that, I, I think so. Yeah, Ali's like, he was moving forward. I was like, so? <laughs> that's just that's just Ali doing his job. Yeah, I know, I know. He's, do, he's doing his job, yeah. but I was just like, that's like yeah. yeah. That was like that was like that was like, that was like Giga Chikadze saying Marvin Vittori won the first three rounds against Israel Adesanya yeah. or something to that extent. Yeah, I'm like, are you nuts? Guys, Come on, you have guys. to like support your guys, but that's just silly and egregious. Yeah. Uh, um. So now with that loss, okay. I I I don't know if they have actually made the match upset. You can leave that up there. Yeah. But I, that, if, if, I think Rory might have to fight Magomed, Magomed Karamov oh. in the playoffs. And if that's the case, that is a brutal draw after like winning a fight or losing a fight you should have won. You have to fight that. I'm hoping they read this for like, a, like a, a good – that when the night it happened, I was hoping for. Because I'm sure – I know Casey watched. I don't know if, Mike, you watched. But uh, the YouTube versus TikTokers uh, boxing <laughs> ex- exhibition. Um well, I can't remember who it was, but the co-main event, and I don't know who either of the individuals were, um, or it might have been the main event. I don't remember. Um, they the announcer read the scores wrong oh. and announced it as a draw. But like, if you watch the fight, it was like T Bow. It was like if T Bow and McDonald was announced as a draw, but they put up the stats, and one guy clearly cooked the other guy, and they announced it as a draw. <laughs> And then the the one that clearly lost is like, no, nah, I think I won. And then the next day, the the quote unquote commission came out with a picture of the scorecards, and he basically just cleans. He basically fifty forty five them, and they just read it wrong. Oh my god! It was so funny to me. I'm like, of course this would happen. <laughs> it is pretty stressful being a, right, like I, 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 have, I have, have a guy won every single round, and they were like, uh, draw. <laughs> I loved it. I was like, I, and then I was like hoping like boxing, like the new boxing fans and like these, these social media personalities are boxing now. They're like, Oh, I wonder if this happens a lot. I'm like, it happened every day. My guy. <laughs> I got, and also I like to, I like to, I appreciate the shade that Jose just threw at me when going, I know, <laughs> I know Mike didn't watch it, but Casey, you, I know you watch a YouTube <laughs> TikTok. Right? Like, Paige Van Zandt was the uh, Joe Rogan for it. She was the commentator, and then went and interviewed all the fighters. Good for her. I wrote up. I wrote up one of the knockout videos from that yeah. card. There you know, was knocked the dude through the ropes. There were two because I genuinely wanted it because a few of them have been training with Ryan Garcia and Canelo's team, and I, you kept they kept talking about them on interviews, and I was like, I wonder if these guys are good. So I tuned in for the last three. None of the people they said were good were any good. 
<laughs> but two of their opponents were like could make legitimate amateurs, I think. Like they put the time in. I don't know any of their names though. What a world. Does Korean Zombie join the list of fighters who want to fight Yair Rodriguez? Giga posted a video. He called Yair the P word. Uh, first of all, if you're Yair, and I don't even care how long you've been out for, it's been almost two years at this point. Max Holloway was on the other side of that contract. I don't care how long, is it, to, how long it takes. You're waiting for that guy. I mean, you're, I mean, there's no other fight that even interests you unless it's for the title. The only, yeah, the only fight, if you don't get Max, you just, and they give you the title instead. But fi- basically, fighting Max is fighting who a lot of people consider to be the best featherweight in the world. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they, gave, they gave him a kind of, a, a, yeah, a, t- a, non, a, a non-title title fight, fighting Max. Yeah. Right? So, yes. uh, yeah, you wait. Unless, but we don't know what's going on with Max. We don't know the, if is it, oh, do we, right? We don't know, no one knows officially yet, right? Someone was. I saw a lot of people online saying if the fight was even official, or if this is the UFC kind of pressuring Max to take the fight by announcing it too early. Oh, you know. And then Max is no, like, "I'm we, not." Right? I understand. I understand. But you, you, you get the optics. Like this is. It wouldn't be the first time we've seen something like. Yeah, that. Yeah, UFC pressure someone. Yeah, I, I, it didn't. I to to me, it though. didn't see. To me, just talking to people who in the in the know, mm-hmm. so to speak, uh, didn't seem that way. Hmm. So. Yeah. So I hope, yeah, hope, uh, hope but yes, if you're the Korean zombie and they offer to you Yair, I am sure you're you're jumping on it. You don't even care about the date. You just say yes because first th- that first fight was insane and ended in the most insane way ever. Sure, he'd love to get back, get a guy above him, and try to negate one of the craziest losses in UFC history. Top three knockouts in the history of MMA. Absolutely, hundred percent. Absolutely. I try very, I try very hard. To be impartial on press row. Like by impartial means I genuinely don't care who wins fights. I, I am very good at watching a fight down the middle. But when something crazy happens, you know, sometimes you just kind of lose control of your body. I yeah. I've tried really hard not to do anything. Like I was watching like the Nate Diaz Leon Edwards fight. I was watching my arms folded like this, but when Nate hit that like one, two, I kind of like my body jolted back a bit. And like that's the extent of what happened. But when Yair hit that elbow, I I literally just went like, oh like so loud that was the one of the craziest things i've ever seen in my life yeah i'm an eyebrow i'm an eyebrow raiser like yeah the wider my eyes get the cooler the moment and the more the, the more vicious the strike so like covering like the bellator event from a few weeks ago i was just like okay yeah yeah but when michael page kicked Derek anderson yeah. in the face my eyes were like like above my head i was like ooh, good thing i'm not on camera right like, now because that's an ugly like ass face fu- <laughs> like for Fight Island, like when Habib did his thing and Izzy knocked out Paolo and Brian Ortega hit that spinning back elbow, I didn't have any reaction. I it's the, dude, the fans in attendance, a full crowd in Glendale when it was one two from Nate, and then I couldn't hear Oscar Willis sing. I couldn't hear him say anything. It was so loud in there. Then my body like jolt, like someone electrocuted me when when Nate Diaz hit that. I thought he was about to knock Leon Edwards out, and it would have been the craziest fifth round I've ever seen. For sure. Yeah. Hey, um, Jose, do, do, can, you, can you do an impression of me watching um, Connor versus Nate one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> after when we like because we were like, saying, like, we, 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 heard the story, we, Mark. We really didn't know. I each don't other. think we're, so. We're, we were just kind of well, me and Casey the media. very we, we much like each other, but, yeah. we knew of the each media. other yeah, from the like the ro- being on the road so much. But this was the at the old MGM. Uh, well, the MGM is still there, but they don't have really fights yeah, any, MGM, anymore. Yeah, and we got yeah. the auxiliary seating, and me and Casey happened to be sitting next to each other. And we were like, oh, Jose, oh, I'm Casey. Yeah, we've met before, but we're about to watch something crazy. Yeah. And then by the end of the fight, we were like, <laughs> literally like, <laughs> oh, my God, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. We, were like, we were like shaking each other, and like beer was like pouring on us. We were like, oh, we got to get back. So we, we ran back, in the yeah. back. Because uh, those old MGMs, you have to enter through the concourse and go down. So you have to literally enter with the crowd yeah. to get to press row and stuff. So we ran back because we knew if people, if like the Irish started like causing chaos, we'd have to get back to the studios A and B yeah. ASAP. That was <laughs> that was one of the loud. That is f- top five loudest arenas I've ever been. I've yeah. ever been inside. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 my whole i was wearing like a nice suit and it's like i jumped into a pool 
<laughs> because of the amount of beer that was being thrown at, like thrown around. Oh, I'm sure it was a it was scenes, man. Scenes. Oh, I remember watching just watching that with the, I think I was playing. We we had played poker for a while, and then then the fight came on, and we were, I was just like, wow, can't believe that just happened. But it was pretty cool. And then Nate cut that promo, and I was like, woo. I couldn't yeah. hear it. I didn't hear it until <laughs> like the next day because you can't hear anything in there. I didn't hear anything anyone said like on this past Saturday uh, in Glenda. I heard no post fight interview. It was wild. What else this we got? fight rules too between Chavez and Alvarez. This fight is so good. Who's Alvarez? I don't know very much about him. That's Canelo's brother. Oh, that's Canelo's brother. Okay. Oh, yeah. You mentioned it. Sorry. Is it? Wait, no. I'm not. Am I thinking the right guy? Whatever. Regardless. I, it's something, some relation, I think. Okay. Because Canelo, they keep yeah. cutting well, to Canelo, Canelo and he's I going mean, ballistic. Close enough. He's yelling at yeah. him. So he, you know, yeah, he keeps going ballistic. And then Chavez is the younger Chavez. Not Chavez Jr., but Chavez Jr.'s brother. Who, who does my hair? So it's uh, True North Barber, downtown Phoenix. Uh, they trim it up and then I do the rest. You do the rest? Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, got a lot of blood in this fight. Yeah, it's a, be- it's a it's a scrap, man. I'm not gonna say it's a beautiful fight, but it's like a fun fight. It's a Mexican fight. Yeah, like it. I'm shout out to Shula for including the accent as well. Wait, so so just so I know we're like on the same. We're, we don't have any delays. So what do you? I am on right about two fifteen of round six. Really? Unless I'm, at, I'm behind. I'm at two forty five around six. So you're thirty seconds no. ahead of me. Okay. I'm I'm not where are you watching? Round six yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching on the fight TV app on the like because like my my uh, TV has a fight app. Okay, hold on. All right. We might have, we might have to get on the same. Um, well, what we're gonna what we'll, 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 we'll do. Yeah. Yeah, and what what we'll also do is like whoever's, we'll all try to sync up at the same time, yeah, and then yeah. we'll do like three, two, one. Okay, I'm at two now. The sixth round has begun on, on mine. Okay, yeah, yeah the sixth got, round just okay. began I'm, on yours. I'm at one minute and thirty seconds. So I'm literally a minute and twenty seconds behind you. Yeah. Dude, Probably I'm, more. Anderson Ander, Ander, Silva's walking out on mine. Yeah, nah. fight's over. <laughs> Anderson <laughs> Silva, yeah. Anders Silva died. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this got real dark. <laughs> it's like so. I don't know if you were in, you were there, Casey, but I watched uh, last year's Double or Nothing with the individual that was walking around your house right now. It was that, like we were live stream, yeah. like we all like zoomed in, like we all had a zoom and we were watching. I was a good like seven minutes behind everyone. Oh, that long, that far. Oh, it was unreal. People were like, "Oh, that's nuts!" And then like, I'm like, I'm not even. That match hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> You know what's funny when when you're at um when you're at in the at the apex in the in the media room and I'm watching the fights I have to make sure I turn your mic off because I can hear like the horns oh, yeah. and like and you guys oh, yeah. going what a knockout I'm like oh what happened yeah. <laughs> like, or something yeah. yep this is a fun fight though you guys ruin it for me there's a lot of blood on uh, this gentleman Chavez Chavez, Chavez yes Chavez. Oh, the doctors right. are wearing full white trench coats too. That is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at. I guess it was raining there for a while too. Oh, boxing in the rain! I've never watched a live boxing match in the rain. It looks aesthetically, it looks awesome. I I imagine it has to be a nightmare for the boxers. Oh yeah, yeah that was like uh oh, mayweather oh, mayweather um freaking logan um logan, logan paul like the, or, the, the prelim fights were had to be stopped for the rain for a while i was gonna say um minoru suzuki wrestled kazushi okada in the rain outside in japan and the photos of that match are amazing like when they slap and it's because it's like raining rain it's not drizzling so like when they slap you can see like the water marks of their hands and like the water exploding on the chest and everything that just looked cool but it seems like such a nightmare to deal with. Yeah. Oh. So we got this fight. We have one more and then the Silva fight. It will, we'll all try to sync up. So if you're like watching on TV, just pause it. If you're watching on your computer, just pause it. We, and then we'll gonna, like, are we going to, we'll get to the same thing. Are we going to start a new stream for that? 
we're gonna well we'll keep we'll, just, we can just probably just some, keep this one just keep some music going on for a while and okay. yeah it's up to you we could probably we could probably take a couple more questions yeah I think a couple and then more we'll uh take a little breather i mean yeah. maybe some folks gotta hit the grocery store and prepare for such uh an iconic moment in mma fighting history oh, oh we got i guess oh, jose is nice already try. doing that all right peace out jose um <laughs> <laughs> let's see you can go wait hold on here we go all right, we'll hang off for like another 10 minutes. Did Mike's team win the charity golf event? We did not win the charity golf event. Um, we had fun though. We shot under par. That's always my goal. Uh, we birdied the first four holes. And then uh, and then we were very average the rest of the way. Very, very medium. A couple bogeys. A lot of opportunities to score and we just couldn't do it. We couldn't putt for crap and couldn't get anything close. We would be within a hundred yards and then we hit a ball and our, we'd have like 40 foot putts for birdie and just awful, but we had fun. And a lot of money was, was raised for breast cancer research through the Jimmy fund. And that's why we do it. And I got to hit a tee shot with hockey gloves on. It's my favorite part of the tournament. <laughs> and we got a, and we got a birdie on that hole, which is great, uh, but it was fun. Oh, man, it was I did bad. a lot of driving yesterday. I woke up at three fifteen in the morning. Took a shower, hit the road at 4.15, got there about 6.45, teed off at 8, ate some food, and then right back in the car, and it was like almost a four-hour drive home because of traffic. So it sucked to drive home. What else we got? Uh, la, la, la. Uh, real quick, real quick. Talk to some other sprots. Sons. I'll go Suns. Make Shaheen happy. Yeah. I, I, go Sean. Yeah. Jose, Jose had no, he has no opinion. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think I, that's it. Wait, Jose, Jose, I'm here. where are you at, Jose? I'm hearing your little beeping thing, but it's like you're not showing up. There you are. Should we do another stream or what? We have another. We have, Jose, want to go to that other stream that we set up and just change? Wait, you're frozen. God dang it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go, we'll, we'll go to another stream. We'll go to, I think we'll go to another stream because we, we, we still have like 45 minutes and then we'll get, we'll, we'll, yeah, we still have another whole fight. <laughs> yeah. We'll go to another stream because the other one we'll have it. This one's YouTube only. So we'll have the other one um, on all the, um, all the social platforms. I don't think Chavez senior Camacho is going to go the full rounds. Uh, considering Chavez senior is like 60 or 70 something <laughs> years old, but I think it's only eight rounds too. Right. Since it's exhibition. So we, what do we think? Reconvene at twelve Eastern, something like that. Suns and six, by the way. Suns and six. Yeah, I like. Right. That. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> All right. So for those of you watching right now that are getting amped up to watch some boxing with us, because we have no idea what the hell is going to happen. This is a total crapshoot, and I'm very excited about it. <laughs> do what you got to do. Go get your refreshments. Run to the store before it closes. Come on back. Get comfy. And in about 35 minutes, we're going to get you fired up for Anderson Silva's return to combat sports in the boxing ring. And this should be glorious, friends. Should be glorious. We'll react. We'll react. We'll smile. Maybe cry. Who knows? But join us and we'll do it all together. So for Jose, for Casey, I am Mike Heck. Enjoy the intermission. We'll see you on the other side, and we'll watch some boxing. See you boxing, then. boxing, boxing. <laughs> You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network.